Hello everybody and welcome to the first video of the new manufacturing curriculum. My name is Andrew Vogt and I will be the narrator of this video. This video is going to discuss the manufacturing labs in the Department of Mechanical Engineering as well as important safety practices. First thing I'm going to talk about is safety and why safety is so important. Then I'm going to present a map of all the labs in the Department of Mechanical Engineering and we're going to go through a physical tour of all these labs. These labs include the design lab shop, the undergraduate machine shop, and the graduate machine shop. Safety is the most important part of manufacturing. There are many safety rules we need to follow, and most of these rules are just common sense, but we want to go through a few specifics here to make sure that you understand what the really important safety procedures are of our labs and many other manufacturing labs you may work in. Safety rule number one is a shop supervisor must be present for anybody to use the shop. Now the shop supervisors we have, the primary supervisors are Mike Knudsen in the undergraduate machine shop and Tong Slowick in the graduate machine shop. Safety glasses are an important part of working in any machine shop. The safety glasses shown to the left of the screen are appropriate examples of safety glasses. The ones shown to the right of the screen are examples of inappropriate safety glasses. The first one is inappropriate because it has dark lenses which restrict your view. The second is inappropriate because it does not have side shields, which help prevent debris from coming from the side of the lenses. If you have any questions about which safety glasses to use, you may always ask a shop supervisor. Just as safety glasses are as important for protecting our eyes from debris and other hazards in a machine shop, there are other parts of our body which need equal protection. Our feet are a good example of this. Well, in the machine shop, we always want to make sure to wear closed-toed shoes, such as the shoes to the right, and not open-toed shoes, such as the shoes to the left, to prevent any kind of unwanted hazards from going into our feet. Considering protecting our eyes and our feet makes us aware of other hazards which exist in the machine shop and other things we need to do, need to, do to protect ourselves from getting injured. A couple of those things are making sure that we don't have things that get in the way of machines. One example being our hair. If our hair is too long, it can get caught in machines and cause severe problems. Another example are earphones. Any kind of earphones distract us from the important tasks we need to accomplish in the machine shop and provide other safety hazards if someone is trying to give us a warning or anything else similar to that nature. Earrings can be a, a quite a problem, especially because they can also, like hair, get caught in machines and cause serious injury. And finally, any other kind of baggy or loose clothing, such as shorts or MC Hammer pants, uh, can be a serious problem. So we want to make sure that our clothing is comfortable, but not loose fitting. We don't have anything dangling off our body that can get caught in the machine shop. And we don't have any other, dis any other distractions which prevent us from doing our work effectively. Aside from clothing considerations, there are many other steps which must be taken to ensure safety in the shop. One is to make sure that your hands stay away from any moving part. Uh, and this includes not only staying away from or not touching the moving part itself, but getting close to the moving part. If your hands are close to, say, a bandsaw, for instance, as shown in the lower left-hand corner, you can severely hurt yourself. If an accident occurs, it is extremely important to let the shop supervisor know immediately. This includes Mike Knutson, the director of the undergraduate machine shop, Tom Slowick, the director of the graduate machine shop, or any lab TA. When working in any of the manufacturing labs, it's very important that you also know how to find or where the first aid kit is located. The first aid kit looks something as like the picture shown in the lower right hand screen. If you have any doubt on how the machines work or any of the shop procedures, don't assume that you know, ask somebody. If you don't ask somebody and you do something incorrectly, you could either break the machine or, very, or hurt yourself. And of course, it's really important for you to notice that if you have any problems with machines or anything else or anything unusual to make sure you report it to a supervisor um, as soon as possible. Aside from the other safety clothing we've discussed, another important safety concern are, is the use of headphones or ear protection. The machine shop is an extremely loud place with very high frequency sounds that can damage your hearing. And it's really important to consider what you're doing to your hearing while you're in the machine shop. And finally, it's very important to keep a clean work environment. Not only because it's considered to others, but you can easily get, you can easily trip or hurt yourself on your own mess. So it's very important to keep a clean environment. We've covered many of the important safety procedures 
when working in the mechanical engineering labs. But remember, use common sense, and there are many things to consider when working in these labs. Now what we're going to do is go through a quick tour of all the mechanical engineering labs. This is the outside, or this picture represents the outside of the Joseph F. Merrill Engineering Building, the outside on the southwest corner. So if you proceed into the doors, as shown by the arrow, you're going to see this intersection. The first shop we're going to take a look at is a design shop, which is shown by the direction of this arrow. And what I presented here is a quick map of all the different shops. You can see the design shop and design suite are where we're going to go first, shown by the red arrows. We're then going to go, by the, go to the pro shop and then the undergraduate shop. We're going to kind of proceed in this manner with, this, with these tours. So to move on, we move down the hallway towards the design shop and the design suite. And you notice that we have two entrance doors. One is for the public entrance and one is for key card access. Now, it's most likely that if you're a student, uh, you will not have key card access, but you'll be able to go through the public entrance doors. If you do have key card access, you simply take your University of Utah ID card and swipe it near the black box where the caution sign is on the key card access door. When you get in the room, you will see basically two sides of the room. The left side of the room is the design suite side, and the right side of the room is the design shop sign. The design suite side is where many, many students will go for classes, such as ME1000, um, to do various projects. You also see senior design teams on that side, and it's just a place for you to work. The design shop side is a small shop that you can use uh, to, to build projects. So if, let's proceed over to the design shop side. What you'll see is you'll see external workspaces here, uh, and basically the machining equipment towards the, towards the back of the room. So the workbenches that are on the outside of the machine shop are open to anybody. Uh, and there's basically a standard workbench that you could use or a heavy duty workbench that has vices. When going into the machining area, it's really important to take notice of these signs. So first of all, this lab is only used for 2510 students only. So no 1,000 students are allowed here. And it's limited to only 10 students. That doesn't mean 10 students can be working here. That means only 10 students can be in this chain link area. Also, you must wear safety glasses in the lab. And further, safety glasses must be worn in the entire lab space, both the design suite and the design shop. But it is especially important to wear safety glasses inside this shop. You'll notice there's also a list of important safety rules. These cover very similar rules to what we've already discussed, but it's really important for you to review these when, when entering the shop area. So as we go into the shop, basically to the right-hand side of the wall, you'll see these tools. You'll see a belt sander to the, towards the back, a band saw, a scroll saw, a drill press, and some drill press accessories. To the other side, you'll see the standard workbenches, similar to the ones that we saw outside of the shop, and you'll see a compound miter or a chop saw to the back of the room. So now I'm going to go through just a quick introduction of all the machines on the right-hand side of the wall as you enter the shop. This is the drill press. So a couple of things that are important for you to know. This top part of the drill press is the gearbox. This is where you would change gears on the drill to have the, have the, gear, have the drill actually go different speeds. And it's important depending on the materials you're going to use. Of course, on-off switches uh, to turn the drill press on and turn it off. Quill lowering handle and the quill. The quill is the device that actually lows, lowers the drill um, into the material. And the quill, quill lowering handle lowers the quill into that um, material. The chuck is what's attached to the quill and what's actually your, what is your drill bit, drill bits are attached to. And a vise is what holds your stock together. It's usually a good idea, or almost always a good idea, to put your material in a vise so that it can be held snugly. And finally, we have a drill table which attaches to the vise so that you can hold your stock even stronger. The next tool we're going to look at is called the scroll saw. Scroll saw is a really great tool for making those hard saw, saw cuts. It has an on-off switch, like the drill press, tension adjustment, and saw guard, a saw itself, a blower for blowing, your blowing the waste out of the way, and any other kind of, it, it attaches to the saw itself as well, and of course a saw table. Now this, the important thing about this tool is it's really important to think about the tension of the saw itself. And when you actually get in the shop, you need to know, you'll, you'll get a feel for what's 
a good tension and what is a bad tension. If it's not tense enough, then it won't cut your material very well and it could break the blade. And if it's too tense, it could also break the blade as well. Next, we're going to go on to the bandsaw. The bandsaw is very similar to the scroll saw. It's not quite as, it can't quite be as accurate as a scroll saw, but it's far more powerful um, and, and it's much better for bigger pieces of stock. So, and those, on the bandsaw, some important things to remember is there's a blade guard so that you don't cut yourself or it helps to, helps to guard the blade from the rest of um, your body. A blade itself, an on-off switch, and a saw table, which of course allows you to rest your stock on and be cut. And of course, it's like there's also a sawdust waste part on this particular bandsaw. So when you're actually cutting, a lot of a lot of the tailings which you're cutting will go out of the saw itself. Another important tool is shown here is called the belt sander. Now this belt sander is of course an on-off switch and two belt sanding discs. The belt sanding disc to the right, the left, the vertical vertical belt sander is actually not attached right now. But you'll learn that there's a, there are many important uses for both these two types of discs, or two, excuse me, two types of belts. So now that we've kind of talked about the basics of the tools in the design shop, we're going to just kind of give you a quick introduction of what the pro shop is. So we're going to head into this door where the pro shop is, and you can see it looking on the map, this is exactly where we're going. So the thing about the pro shop, which is important, is you're probably not going to be using the pro shop very much as a sophomore. This is something that is used more by graduate students and seniors, but it's good to know at least where it is and what, what we do in the pro shop. So if you look left in the pro shop, you'll see this image. Looking straight ahead, you'll see some other machines. And looking to the right, you'll see other machines too. The pro shop has many more advanced machines which are, which are used oftentimes with computer numerical control systems. That means that we can use computers to actually instruct the machines on how to cut off a certain part. So now that we've kind of given a quick, quick introduction to the pro shop, we're going to go over to the undergraduate shop. And the undergraduate shop is, is found by going down the hallway to the right. So once again, you look that if you go down the hallway, take a left and take another left, it'll land us in the undergraduate shop. So we go down that hallway, we take a left, we take another left in this doorway here, and we come into the undergraduate shop. And you can see where that you're here when you see the stop sign and signer. So as we go inside, this is basically the view you're going to see. The map in the upper right hand corner of the screen shows where you are in the shop in relation to everything else. You can see in here you're going to see many different types of machines. The machine right in front of you is called a mill, um, which is something you we will get to in later videos. And as you keep going around the shop, basically you can see many other types of tools. The man to the right is actually Mike Knudsen. He is the director of the shop and a person who you'll be very you'll be getting very familiar with in the next couple of years. He's a great source and is very knowledgeable. If you keep going around the shop um, you'll see these machines on the right hand side. These are called lays. Um, and we're gonna learn a lot more about lays but the most important tools you'll learn in the shop um, are the lays and the mills. If you go to the back of the shop you'll see these tools. Now you'll see at the very back, the white tools are belt sanders, very similar to what we already looked at before. Um, right in front of that, uh, one of the, you can see the 7-Eleven Big Gulp container. Those are grinders. Um, you won't, you, we won't you talk about grinders too much here, um, but it's important that you know what they are at least. Finally, this portion of the shop is the hand tool closet. Now, hand, it's extremely important to know where all these tools are. These are the tools you're going to, these are tools that you'll use on an everyday basis, such as hammers, wrenches, but also there are tools you will use with um, machines themselves. So if you look at the picture on the left hand side, you can see that there's labels in green and labels in red. The labels in green are everything that's associated with the lathe, where the labels in red are everything that's associated with the mill. Now looking at the picture on the right, everything else, basically everything in the yellow um, yellow label boxes um, and, and the tools in the red, green, yellow, and blue uh, drawers are everything else, every other kind of tool you'd use in the shop. Not necessarily with, associated with a lather mill, but any other miscellaneous tool you would 